Brilliant, Arnold. Nice outfit. Are you ready to party? Out of sheer envy, Clint Eastwood himself would burst into tears like a little girl if he saw you. This'll be a super experience, I promise you. Dang, everyone's in cowboy suits here. Well, you're not the first person to copy this image. The American cowboys styled themselves after Spanish cowboys called vaqueros, and they appeared long before the American ones, when the Spaniards began to colonize south of the border. And did you know one in three cowboys was black, and one in four was Indian? And the language they most often spoke was Spanish, not English. Quite the introduction, Arnold. You really now are in the actual Wild West. And they call it wild for a reason, buddy. And nowhere is this moniker embodied more than in Fort Griffin, Texas. The fort was originally designed to protect ranchers and farmers who live nearby. The city quickly became a popular stopover for cowboys and criminals, and law enforcement was virtually nil. As a result, the city became even more dangerous, and it looks like you're now the sheriff of this city. Sorry, is it just me or are sheriffs not very popular in this little old town? Arnold. Really? The first thing you decided to do as head honcho around here was update your wardrobe? Why so surprised? The average life expectancy in the Wild West was about 35 years. And for sheriffs, it was decreasing exponentially. Here comes your first good deed, Sheriff. What? You thought only cowboys carried guns. In reality, most cowboys were like shepherds driving cattle. They were pretty much harmless folk. But people with weapons were called gunfighters, and they earned their living with guns. The most legendary shooter in the whole Wild West was Frenzy Bill Longley. Killed up to 85 people and had a $1,000 bounty on his head. Luckily, people didn't have such good aim back then. By the way, it was the era of the Wild West that gave birth to the culture of owning guns in America. Arnold, listen. Hearing that kind of music is definitely not good. In westerns, it usually means that bandits have entered town and are probably going to do something bad like rob a bank. It's Dirty Harry, One-Eared Tom, and Handsome Bill. Hmm, why were they given such obvious nicknames back then? Interesting solution, Arnold. You blew up the bank so the bandits can't rob it. You're a natural-born strategic genius. No, Arnold, you forgot about the train carrying the gold. According to statistics, there were 241 train robberies during the time of the crazy Wild West. Quite good statistics. You forgot one of the sheriff's main rules. Your revolver must always be in perfect working order. Adios, Arnold, and please quit this dang job. You just ain't cut out for a partner. Did you actually lose your job as a pizza delivery guy? Now, just imagine if you had two heads. You'd be way more popular. Your life would be much more interesting. You'd be smarter. And you could finally learn how to ride a bike normally. Look, this is the same guy from the sign. The circus ringmaster. Oh my god. Did that lion actually just swallow the whole two-headed dude? No, actually, it seems the heads are unharmed. But what's going to happen now? Is the big show of the season canceled? Hey, it seems the manager has noticed you and wants you to be in the cast. But only if you agree to have these two good-as-new heads sewn onto your body. Isn't that what you've always dreamed of? Well, since you agree, I think you should find out more about the upcoming surgery. The first successful head transplantation was done by Charles Guthrie in 1908. He did it on dogs, though. One of the heads was sewn to the neck of a dog's body upside down. In the 1950s, Demikhov achieved full functioning of a second head. He transplanted 20 heads together with the front half of the dogs. Then the head of one dog was transplanted onto the body of another. And then there was a monkey, which, after transplantation, even tried to bite one of the doctors. In 2013, Sergio Canavero announced plans for a human head transplant.
The estimated cost was $12.8 million. In 2017, under his leadership, a dead human head was transplanted onto a corpse. Actually, it suits you, Arnold. Now it's time to rehearse your part. I hope you don't screw up and disgrace these beautiful heads. You're gonna have to juggle as you ride your unicycle on a springboard through burning hoops. Yay! They don't seem to like you being so stupid, Arnie. Try not to interfere with the professionals managing your body. All that's required of you is to not spoil the performance. The grand premiere. All eyes are fixed on you, Arnold. Today, you are the main part of the show. Fingers crossed, buddy. You're doing great. Just a little more. And is that Tagaya over there? Did she come to see you? No, no, don't get distracted. Not now, Arnold. What a doofwad. By trying to be a gentleman, you disgraced yourself and the Truel brothers. That was the greatest failure this circus has ever seen. I see the late night beer bash is a big success. But don't forget, in the morning, you got a conference of below 60 IQ YouTubers. And if you're late, your career is toast. There's no time for the toilet. You gotta hold it, buddy. The bladder comfortably holds 150 to 200 milliliters of fluid. But after 400 to 500 milliliters, you'll feel some pressure. You must have drunk a lot. Eee, looks like the boss is in a bad mood. And for sure, he ain't gonna let anyone take bathroom breaks. Fluid is absorbed into the kidneys, then descends through the ureter into the bladder. You're probably feeling a bit stressed, Arno, because now you got to hold the pee in with your muscles. I recommend you don't laugh, Arnold, or sneeze, or cough. Anything like that weakens the muscles, and you might start leaking. Hooray! Break time! You're saved! The average person goes tinkle six to eight times a day. Ooh, no luck there, Arnold. In ancient times, rules of decency allowed people to go wee-wee in public, and the division of toilets into men's and ladies only occurred in 1792. Okay, break's over, buddy. Now it's your turn to give your presentation. If you hold it in for a long time, the bladder walls can stretch, so you can hold even more PP. But this can be dangerous. Bacteria and acids in your urine can crawl back up into your kidneys, causing cystitis and pyelonephritis. It seems, Arnold, that everyone approves of your dissatisfaction with company policy. Come on, Arnold. I know you can hold it a little longer. Just 50 more talks and then you're free. Well, that's it. Time to go home. And Arnold, I advise you not to make any sudden movements. If your bladder is that full, it could pop. Yay, you're almost home. Now we just have to get through the morning rush hour. Move slowly. Oh no, it seems your neighbor's coming, Arnold. You know, the guy who likes to give everyone a big hug when they meet. Where'd you get a car? Arnold! You almost killed that bird! Now you have to call a taxi for this lady. Luckily, it was a sparrow and not an eagle. I think your phone just ordered all of the taxis in the entire United States to one place. In the USA, about 230,000 people are registered as taxi drivers, more than half of whom are Uber drivers. All these cars lined up in a row will create a traffic jam with a length of 800 kilometers. One third of New York State will be paralyzed. It'll become difficult to breathe on the streets due to emissions increasing to double the usual amount. And because of that, you'll start coughing, feel nauseous, and might even suffer a stroke. 
Don't place your hopes on an ambulance since it can't save you or the other 3,000 patients who call an ambulance every day. You can take a chance and try to take the subway to the hospital, but the 6 million people who normally drive their cars are already on the subway. So today, there are about 11 million evil, angry, late people down there. Hey, he's the one who caused all the traffic jams. Criminals have already robbed half of the shops in the city because police can't respond to most crimes. Arnold, I think you'd better get out of the country altogether. There's a place for you on just about any plane leaving New York. People can't get to the airport and planes are flying half empty. And from this company are losing more than $10,000 per flight. Does an Arnold always pay his debts? All the taxi drivers together spent about $15 million just on gas to come pick you up. How in the world will you pay? Arnold, do you really have the money? Are you waiting for your friends? Hmm, my friends don't act like that. Arnold! What have you done this time? Oh, not you, but rather your dangerous aunt. After she walked free last time, she got up to her old nefarious yeah. habits again. And now the FBI are taking you for 24 hours because, well, you know her best. There are about 15,000 agents working for the FBI with 56 regional offices. Their main training facility is located in Quantico, Virginia. More than 100 special agents are at the facility at any given time, ready to train new agents. They'll also teach our Arnold. An FBI agent has to be prepared for anything, but not for this. How can that even possibly come in handy, Arnold? FBI agents received the right to carry weapons in 1934, a whole 26 years after their founding. Nowadays, marksmanship training is absolutely necessary and one of the most important courses. And Arnold seems to be doing just fine. Having proved his abilities at all stages of training, our Arnold will become an FBI agent for 24 hours. Not bad company, Arnie. Perhaps our Arnold will try his hand at the cyber department created in 2002. That's where they have the kind of cutting-edge technology that will help Arnold in his search. Have you actually found what you're looking for already, Arnold? Come on, buck up, Arnold. I knew I shouldn't have expected much. After all, your belly always comes first. Thanks to a tip-off that was received by, of course, not Arnold, the FBI managed to find out where his aunt's accomplice lives, the infamous biker known as Buffalo Joe. And now a special operation is being carried out. Here's our suspect. Everybody get ready. Oh, Come on, Arnold. It's always something with you. Arnold, come on. Your colleagues need help. How are you going to stop him like that? What? It can't be. Ooh. Somehow, your idiocy serves you well. Here's your chance to interrogate a prisoner. Well, Arnold, to get answers, you have to ask questions. And they say silence is golden. Oh, you have an idea, do you? You're going to give him a lesson on good behavior. Oh, God, what a treacherous move. Arnold, I don't recognize you. I didn't expect you to be able to break this mountain of muscles like he was a little baby boy. Well, Arnold, you're darn close to capturing your aunt. And if you want to know more about Arnold's work at the FBI, then leave a like and write your version of what you think happens in the comments. And maybe, just maybe, it will be chosen for the next episode. Arnold. Something unexpected has happened. Do you remember the movie The Devil's Double? The one where a rich boy forcibly turns another person into his double and then sends the clone instead of himself to dangerous meetings and stuff like that. So, yeah, we need you to help out one of my acquaintances. You'll replace Kim Jong-un for a day. Can you even imagine ruling a country with a population of 25 million people that obey, adore, and extol you, and only you? But, to be frank, they don't have a choice in the matter. Many things that most people see as normal over here are only allowed for you over there. For example, wearing clothes from the best European designers or eating Nutella. 
While you're engaged in important state affairs, your huge house is guarded by a platoon of armed soldiers, an electric fence, and a minefield. Even a nuclear explosion will be repelled by its walls, which are covered with lead rods. Now get ready, because we're going on a trip. Kim said that he wouldn't survive doing this for a second time, and it all looks pretty suspicious. So you're going instead. Your personal armored train starts its journey straight from this house. Its speed doesn't exceed 60 kilometers per hour due to the enormous weight of the cars, which are sheathed with armored plates. Just for today, all of this is in your possession. The harvest this year was quite unsuccessful, as you can see, and 10 million people may die from hunger, sure, but 15 million more will still remain. Guys, you'd better not go in there for about 20 minutes. Okay, fine, if that's for the state's security. Only the president can use the mobile toilet. All urine and stool samples are collected to monitor your health and make sure that no spy, God forbid, finds out about your illnesses. The best room in the whole city was rented just for you. And after leaving, no one will even think that the president stayed here. The security service doesn't leave a single fingerprint or hair from the glorious ruler. Everyone's already waiting for you. Say nothing. Just smile and wave your hand. I just knew that the U.S. president wouldn't send a meeting invitation on WhatsApp. Meet Arnold. And again, he got into trouble. Arnold, don't be such an idiot. You have a billionaire president right in front of you. You can ask him for anything. And by the way, what did you ask for? It's a shame that this time Trump is the one mocking you and not me, because now you're gonna replace him for an entire day. Why will it be a mockery? Just look at what he eats. Chips, burgers, rivers of cola. You'll kick the bucket before the end of the day. After eating Egg McMuffins and cola for breakfast, you're gonna have a meeting with the security services. Sign some documents and, well, ah oh hell, screw this. Let's go have some fun around the city. You're now waiting for the presidential motorcade. These are 12 identical bulletproof cars that can withstand the explosion of a bomb. You have the ability to contact any of the leaders of the whole world. It's lunchtime and a big pizza is waiting for you, smothered in ketchup and chocolate milkshake. This is kind of boring. Maybe we should declare a state of emergency. Or I know, we could troll Kim Jong-un. Maybe we should endorse a law like every American citizen must be subscribed to Meet Arnold. Home sweet home. For dinner, we have chicken legs from KFC and of course, more cola. Something tells me that Trump eats this way just for the image, but in reality, So that's why he takes an annual salary of just one dollar. You asked for his salary as a reward. You're such a maroon. So you got your dollar, but you have to pay taxes for the whole $400,000, which is Trump's original salary, although he gives that away to federal agencies. So, Arnold, which kidney are you going to sell? Arnold, stop eating food that's meant for the crew. What do you have there? Don't tell me. That's a homemade burrito. Did you make it for the astronauts? The rocket has successfully docked with the ISS. Get ready. To open the door, you need to click on the green button in three, two, one. Green button, Arnold, green. I doubt that any of the astronauts are gonna rush to your aid after you left them without any food. You have enough air for eight hours. Somehow during this time, you have to get to the ISS by yourself. Moving your body around ain't gonna do nothing. Even if you run like Sonic, your body's gonna stay in one place. So here are some real options for moving in space. 
The first option is using the air from your oxygen tank. Air moves through its tubes at a speed of 50 kilometers per second. This kind of energy in just 60 hey. seconds could carry you as far as 3 kilometers. But this will significantly reduce your air supply. So let's move on to the second Whoa. option, burrito. <laughs> you wrapped it in foil and foil is an excellent reflector. If you make a sail out of the foil, then particles of light reflecting off of it will transmit their momentum to the foil and thereby accelerate you through space. Did you hear nothing I said about a sail? Son of a schmuck! Ooh, we could use that too. Gases exit the human body at a speed of 3 meters per second and they can fill an entire balloon in a day. You just need to think of a way to let them out. Arnold, what are you up to? How many burritos did you eat? Just a little bit left. Stretch! And... Remember that show Love, Death and Robots? You're gonna have to tear off your hand. Okay, or just your finger. You only have three meters left. Detach part of the suit and throw it in the opposite direction. This will push you forward. <laughs> Ooh. Hmm. Quick, make a wish. <gasps> One fine day, which didn't portend disaster at all. Arnold got locked up in a hypermarket until the end of his days. You may ask why, and the answer is just because. I simply wanted to lock him up in a hypermarket. Here you can eat sweets and candy bars all day long, and you can drive around the store in a cart. At your disposal are goods for recreation, sports, clothes, and even medicines. On average, there are 120,000 different products in a hypermarket that will provide you with 50 years of a carefree life. But unfortunately, without electricity, a large part of these goods are going to spoil the very next day. At room temperature, the entire ton of milk that's in the store will be gone in just 18 hours. Fresh chicken, pork, and beef will all go bad within a day. Cakes and pastries will last a little longer, maybe 36 hours, if you're lucky. You could try to prepare. You could salt the fish and dry the bread. Then their shelf lives will be extended by years. But hey, seize the day, right Arnold? After a week, vegetables and fruits will also go bad and you'll have to switch to cereals. But even just their preparation will deplete the limited supply of water you can drink by at least 10 years. You could try to extend that by filtering it through coal from the gardening department and then cleaning it with silver. Okay, so from now on, your usual meal is going to be canned food. Beef stew can last almost indefinitely if the packaging isn't damaged. And pickled cucumbers and tomatoes can be an additional source of water. So, the three tons of canned food that are in the store will last you for eight years. And then the last remaining source of food will be... Many things can be used for other purposes. For example, you can wipe your bum with just about any kind of paper. You just need to crumple it up thoroughly and, well, use it. Just like our great-great-grannies did. And when you run out of cash, you can always use the card. Did you ever see the film Phone Booth? How about becoming the main character? You're at gunpoint, my gunpoint, and if you hang up the phone, I'll shoot you. Like this. Relax, Arnold. All you have to do is talk on the phone nonstop and live your miserable life. What do you usually do anyway? You watch movies, go to work. Do you even have a job? Of course you do. You work for me, Arnie. You're my bitch. You should keep an eye on the road. Every fourth car accident happens due to mobile phones. More specifically, 1.6 million accidents every year worldwide. This is six times more than because of drunk driving. Arnie, it'd be better if you had a drink. Are you listening to me? Arnold, what did I tell you about uninterrupted conversation? Stay on the line. Can you feel how your phone is getting warm? It's all about overworking the lithium battery. 
Lithium is an alkali metal that dynamically interacts with the environment. You probably bought your charger in a black market where they sell cheap counterfeits. This leads to battery damage and, as a consequence, explosion. Don't worry, Arnie, I'll give you a new phone, all in the name of science. I see you're tired. It's a pity, but you're not allowed to sleep. During the first two days of insomnia, you'll feel a slight trembling in your body and have difficulty with coordination. On the third day, your nutritional requirements will greatly increase as your body goes into fat-burning mode. After four to five days, you'll begin to experience visual and auditory hallucinations. Your speech will become unintelligible, although really, I don't even understand what you're saying now. And the number of words you speak per day will decrease by 80%. You'll look like a zombie within a week, feeble, doddering, and unable to perform even the simplest of tasks. But I don't want to scare you. Tumors, now that's what we're talking about. Do you think Arnold is threatened with tumor formation due to the continuous electromagnetic radiation? Sorry to disappoint you, there's still no reliable evidence of phone radiation causing tumors. Cell phone radiation is non-ionizing and isn't capable of damaging DNA in the cells of the brain, even one as frail as Arnold's. Now, if the phone had more power, Let's say a thousand times more. Such a phone will have an effect similar to that of a microwave oven. It won't lead to the appearance of tumors, but in less than a minute, it will easily melt Arnold's brain and body. You better watch a different movie, Arnie. This little piggy is a little smarter than Arnold. And no, not because it has a Neuralink chip in its brain, but because she came here by bus, unlike our red-headed fool who parked his car with the Mafia for $50 an hour. At this conference, Elon Musk will demonstrate the process of installing an advanced microchip into the brain of these cute little monkeys and in the near future into the brain of a person. Arnold, stop teasing the primates with your keys. See? Great. Well, you had it coming, buddy. I don't understand how Elon could have invited such a doofus to his conference. From a scientific point of view, Neuralink is a fairly simple device. It's a set of electrodes that transmit electrical impulses from neurons in the brain to a computer. But from a technical point of view, it's an astonishingly complex device. Imagine that the brain is a big ball of extraordinarily tangled wires, and you need to carefully connect to it without damaging anything. Arnold, run! It's time to pay for parking, or a tow truck is going to take your car. We need to get the keys from the chimpanzees as soon as possible. Who, with parking prices like these, you're gonna have to live on dollar store ramen till the end of the month. Get in the monkey suit. You'll have better luck this way, trust me. I know it smells like butt cheese, but it's only for five minutes. One more time, Arnold, you can do it. Hey, dudes, where are you taking Arnold? Only I'm allowed to experiment on him. Elon, please be gentle with Arnold. But really, who am I talking to? I'm just a voice in the head of this dumbass. Arnold's brain is almost the same size as that of a primate, and this version of the chip will suit him perfectly. Thanks to Neuralink and Wi-Fi, Arnold can now communicate with other owners of this device via the power of thought. He also benefits from a tremendous increase in the speed of interaction with the Internet. Arnold, come on, concentrate. You can do it. Download Monkey Sign Language from the Internet. I never doubted that you'd succeed, Arnold. But I didn't think you'd drag it out for a whole day. I thought you were so stupid that even the Neuralink chip couldn't help you. But you just forgot to turn it on, you moron. Get ready, we're taking the bus back with Gertrude. Your car was sold to pay the parking fees. They got 600 bucks for it. Decided to go on a trip, did ya? The cheapest ticket on a cruise ship is $860. Get in the box. Hurry, you schmuck! While all 6,000 passengers and almost 2,200 crew members are posing for a photo of their anniversary cruise in front of the ship, you have a chance to get on board. At the moment, we don't have any ad revenue. Or any money at all, really. Hey, don't 
touch anything here. Somehow, your imbecility is heraldic, Arnold. You've managed to fulfill the dreams of oh so many. To be absolutely alone on a massive cruise ship. Woohoo! For just a simple seven day trip, they have more than 12,000 eggs, 380 kilograms of ice cream, and two tons of seafood and meat on board. This amount of food will be enough to last you around five years if you eat it all by your lonesome. After going on a cruise like this one, people on average gain up to three kilograms of excess weight. Cruise ships have a ton of entertainment, so much so in fact that for most passengers, seven days isn't enough to do and see it all. Oops, looks like we're out of fuel. At full speed, the ship burns up to five tons of fuel per day. Now you'll drift in the ocean just like all the other cruise liners do, because it's cheaper than staying in port. Arnold, looks like your vacation's gonna be a wee bit longer than we expected. A whole month has passed. I wonder where this current will carry you. Congratulations, Arnold. Now the whole world hates you. Yay. Pack your bags, schmucko. Your vacation is over.